When they were like, oh my God, I can't believe you said that. I was like, should I not have said that? Because I didn't want to feel like I wasn't fitting in. Why hello? Some of you have some pretty hilarious, wildly entertaining, enjoyable, but racist friends. So what are you to do? Are you supposed to trade them in for some wholesome, politically correct, socially aware, yet kind of buzzkill friends? You can do that. Or you can keep your racist friend and have your cake and eat it too. I'll show you how. What exactly is it about our racist friends that makes it so hard to just let them go? Is it perhaps because the racism comes from this confidence stemming from a sense of superiority that they have? We all like confidence, right? We're all attracted to it. Whether we're sexually attracted to it or platonically attracted to it, we all like confidence in a person. And what can make a person more confident than feeling superior to other people? right? That's a really good cause for confidence. Could it be that their racism comes from a frank candidness that they have about everything they sense in life? Maybe they're like this about everything. Maybe they like to casually say how, I don't know, Mexicans are like this or black people are like that. And they just kind of talk that way about everything, about all of their beliefs. And it just kind of sucks that they think that way about those other races, but they also think that way about certain comedians or certain food or, you know? And maybe that candidness is what makes them an enjoyable person to be around. Who knows? Actually, I'm sure if I really did some digging into it, I could figure it out. But that's not what this video is about. This video is not about why you still like your racist friends because it could be any of those reasons, right? You could have grown up with this person. You might really like this person. You might have a lot in common. There's a lot of things, obviously. I wanted to give you a video about why you shouldn't just toss your racist friends aside, even though the woke community keeps telling you to do so. Disclaimer, there are some racist friends who probably should be left behind, but I will try to get to that. First off, you have to ask yourself, well, how many racist friends do I have? One, two, or is it your entire friend group? One racist friend is very easy to fix. Okay, I'm not gonna say fix, but that's an easy job right there. That's one person. You and your friend are somewhere, that person says something racist, because they probably think it's funny, or maybe they say it out of anger, or maybe they say it out of disgust. At that point, you check them. You check them on that racist thing, and you let them know that's not cool. But if you're in a group of racist people, and you're the only non-racist in the group, or let's be honest, the least racist in the group, what do you do? You're gonna be the buzzkill, right? They're all laughing at Mexicans, and you're just sitting there thinking, hmm, should I say something? So let's just start off with the one white racist friend, right? If you have like one off racist friend that says racist things sometimes, like I have, I actually like being friends with people who have prejudices specifically towards black people because obviously these stereotypes and misconceptions they have don't fit with me, right? Or at least not all of them. But you know, obviously that's not enough because then you start running the risk of being one of the good ones, right? Or being different or unique. So basically you have to check them every time they say something ignorant. And when I say check them, don't be disrespectful. Never be disrespectful. Disrespect does not win anybody over. You know the old saying, it's easier to catch flies with honey than with vinegar. I actually don't know if that's true because it's a lot easier to catch fruit flies with apple cider vinegar than it is with honey. That's like a real thing. You can write that down. That's a life hack for you. I think a big issue that a lot of the communities that are marginalized on the liberal spectrum have is that they tend to get very aggressive or disrespectful when trying to argue for essentially the right to be themselves, right? And I know that there is a long history of, uh, trust me, I know as a black woman, you have to hear me out before you, before you judge, please hear me out. There is a long history of black women being told that they are too loud or too aggressive when they're trying to speak their case. Every community is told that, the LGBT community is told that, uh, people of color told that, women are told that, obviously, right? But I'm not saying you have to soften your voice. I'm saying you have to meet people where they are. 
and speak to them as if you are their friend and that you're just trying to help them out. It's not cool to be racist anymore in 2021. It's not. It's not cool to be homophobic anymore in 2021. It's not. And you have to let that person know that in a way where they don't feel like they're being condescended to or talked down to or shouted at because that doesn't work. So I'm not telling you to mind your manners. I'm just saying approach this with tact in mind. You have to be careful when you're in a situation and you're with a friend that says something ignorant and you're like, hmm, I gotta say something. Do not get angry. Do not furrow your brows or look like I can't believe you would say something like that because that person is gonna feel attacked. They're not gonna wanna change their point of view and likely they're just gonna go and try to seek out people that make them feel welcome or that those comments are welcome. Continue to be their friend, you can even laugh and say like, man, that was ignorant as fuck and let them know that's not okay. You have to tailor this to your friend. You know your friend better than I do. I think that there are just some people who have just not gotten outside of their bubble, who haven't gotten outside of their small town, conservative community type bubble to really see like there's a bigger world out there with all types of characters, with all types of backgrounds. And I just don't think they know. And I think calling them stupid and racist and ignorant is just not effective advocacy for those other groups that you're trying to protect because they're just gonna get defensive. They're gonna get defensive and they're gonna shut down and there's not gonna be a conversation. And if there's not a conversation, then what the hell are we even doing this for? So not too long ago, one of my non-black friends asked me, so Brianna, how often do black women wash their hair? And I did not get offended at all. I mean, I know that there is this stigma around black women and their hair and people thinking that it's dirty and that we don't wash it. And I was like, yes, I get to drop some education on this person. And I just told them about how black hair is really brittle and washing it makes it more brittle. And that is why a lot of black women have short hair or look like they can't grow hair. And when black people stop trying to follow you know, it's not even white, is it? Really, black people are the only people with Afro textured hair, right? Uh, that's the other thing too, like I hate when people like straighten their hair and somebody's like, oh, you're trying to look white. No, every, literally every other culture has straight hair, okay? This is a black thing. I get it, I get it, it's confusing. It's, 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 nobody else has to deal with it but us. And I'm not saying it's our job to educate people, but oh my God, isn't it so much easier to just educate that person in a one-on-one -on -one, then tell them, oh, you just go look it up, do the research, go watch some black hair care videos. I don't have to teach you anything, which is how a lot of black women approach the situation. I don't have a problem with people who are my friends asking me about black hair. You know, it would be different if it was a complete stranger that I didn't know like that. But if it's a, a friend, I've talked to them or they're an acquaintance and I've talked to them multiple times and I know what their intention is and I know that it's coming from a place of curiosity about the unknown, I'm gonna tell them. I'm gonna tell them and I'm like, yeah, yeah, black hair is really brittle. Washing it removes the oil. Just like most people, if you don't wash your hair for a, a several days, it gets oily. Yeah, black people, it takes so much longer for the oil to get down our hair shaft that we need to wait several days to wash our hair. You could think it's dirty all you want, but I'm like, also, I'm like, but do you, do you wash your jacket every time you wear it? Do you wash your coat or your boots every time you wear them? Do you wash your sheets every time you lay under your sheets? But do you see what I'm saying? I'm trying to meet that person where they're at so they understand you don't, there are things that you use on a daily basis that you don't wash on a daily basis. And then at the end of the day, if that person still thinks that's gross, then f them. You know, I don't care. If you think my hair is gross, what can I do about that? Just don't be disrespectful to me, right? Just don't disrespect me. That's all I can say. I've even had non-black friends that will ask me specific things about like, oh, why do black people do this? Or why are black people like this? And I, I'll be like, well, first of all, obviously, I'm not like that. That's not all black people that could be where they're from, that's, oh, you know, that's like a part of their culture, that might be how their family does that, my family does it like this, a lot of black families are like this, 
you know and I might point out like the black people who also like if I'm at work with that person I might point out well this 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 and that black person are also not like that you only notice these ones because they're doing that thing that you don't like and then that person will be like oh yeah you're right I didn't even notice that that is fun for me I really like doing that I really like defending my culture but even outside of blackness, I defend any culture that I see. I defend my friends who are from other cultures from my racist black friends. I have to put the, the stop on my racist black friends. It's completely different in that regard because that way I don't really have to worry about how I look at that point, right? If, if a non-black person comes to me and has a prejudice against black people, I have to watch myself too, don't I? Because I have to, I can't get offended. I can't react in a, in an overly negative or defensive way because that's just gonna hurt the message that I'm trying to send that black people aren't all the same, right? We're not a monolith. But if a black person says some ignorant shit, about one of my Latinx friends or anybody in that community, I'm gonna say some shit and it doesn't matter how I say it. <laughs> you know, I mean, I still wouldn't attack them and be like, oh, you're so ignorant and you're dumb and da 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 da. But I would be like, yo, that's not cool. That's not even how they're, that's not even, they're not even like that. And I would be like, do you even have any Latinx friends? Do you even know a, La a single Latinx person? Then why are you talking, why are you making that assumption? And I just make them feel stupid. And it's easy to dismiss right there. And hopefully the fear of feeling stupid will stop them from saying shit like that ever again. And then maybe it'll change their mind. That's, the, that's what you want, right? That's the ultimate, the ultimate goal is to change people's minds and their hearts so that they don't want to be racist and that they actively work against it. But the reality is we're all racist. I'm racist, you're probably racist. I don't know a single person. It's part of the human nature, you know? We are pattern seekers. If we see people of a certain ethnicity that are doing something, that does something that we don't like, we're gonna take that and try to attribute it to everybody of that ethnicity because we wanna protect ourselves from that. And it's just so much easier than trying to wait and see like this, how this person is as an individual. I get why people are like that. And I think people need to be educated to be able to see black people the way I see them. I see black people as individual people. And if somebody is showing me signs that they might be dangerous or that they might harm me in any way, then you know, I eat the fuck out of there. But you know, for some, a person who doesn't have many or any black friends, they can't tell the difference. We all look the same to them. And they're gonna just put that, that fear blinder on every black person they see. They don't realize that, oh, this is what a dangerous black person looks like, and this is what a safe black person looks like. But if you don't have any black friends, you might think this is what a dangerous person looks like, and a dangerous person is just black. When should you cancel your racist friends? The only reason that I can think of for you canceling your racist friends, first of all, I don't think you should cancel your racist friends. I think the only issue is if you are in a group of racist people and you can see that nothing you can say is gonna change them and that they're harming your mental health. I think it's fine to be friends with racists, even if it looks like they're not gonna change, even if you're a part of a racist group, but if you feel like it's harming your mental health because maybe you are the minority, and when I say minority, I mean like you could be a white person in a group of black people that are racist towards white people, you know? If that's making you uncomfortable, then get out of there, you know? It's not good for your mental health, but I do think it's also important that you stay and advocate for the people that can't advocate for themselves in that group. Whether that group is making fun of, you could be, the whole group could be homogenous, right? It could be a whole group of white people. And if there's people in the group or the group likes to make fun of, I don't know, Pacific Islanders, speak up and say, you know, say something every time they say some shit like that. Just be like, okay, yeah, yeah, that you, that's not funny. And I would just play it off like that shit was lame. Like, yeah, you keep telling, telling those same old jokes. That's not funny, that's not even, what that's like anymore, you know? That, that shit's played out, I don't know. Just try to make it cool, right? Cause people respect it more if it sounds like they'll be socially ridiculed for doing something, right? People care more about that than the fact that doing something is wrong. So if you give them a little bit of social ridicule, people don't like that. People don't wanna feel like they're being outcasted for their beliefs. Cause that's happened to me. It's happened to me before. I don't know if I'm gonna tell you exactly what happened, but let's just say I used to be a lot more conservative than I currently am, 
and I said some unfortunate things when I was in high school and college. And it really like, I'm thinking about all the different reactions and some people were kind of like, the SJWs were probably the worst. They were the quickest to stop talking to me which in turn meant they were no longer educating me and you know so i was like all right well i guess you know and it left a bad taste in my mouth when you're friends with somebody and they don't like how you think about something and then they just stop talking to you what am i going to learn from that you know nothing now i'm going to still continue having my negative having my bad beliefs you know Luckily, I'm a person that continued to educate myself, but a lot of people aren't like that. And there are some people who were at, who reacted with shock. Like, oh my God, I can't believe you said that. Those things stuck out to me because I was like, oh my God, because it was ridicule. When they were like, oh my God, I can't believe you said that. I was like, should I not have said that? Because I didn't want to feel like I wasn't fitting in or you know, being socially ridiculed and I had to like sit on that shit. And I was like, oh my God. I shouldn't have said that. Now everybody's gonna think I'm da 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 da, you know? And I know it's fucked up, but that's human nature, right? We are humans. We wanna fit in. We want to do what everybody else is doing. We wanna be cool. We wanna be admired. I think if you look at people like they're humans and play it from that angle, play on the what humans like, you know? Like humans, humans are really good at patterns. That's why we have stereotypes and racism in the first place. Simultaneously, humans care about their social status. Every human cares about that. If they feel like being racist or homophobic or transphobic or whatever is going to be a detriment to their social well-being, they will stop, I promise you. That's really all I have to say about this subject. Don't dump your racist friends try to convert them first only step out of it if it's like a mental health issue for you that's all i have to say i don't even have any witty outro or anything like that i'm just kind of gonna stop talking now give this video a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to my channel to see more content like this and i will see you next time there's a cat hair on my very sticky lipstick oh my gosh this is like torture.